Hi and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to talk about Easy Drummer and the brand new Easy X called the Classic. And what I'm really excited about with this Easy X is that it has the classic four mic setup. When I found out that this was available I was really excited, I was waiting for this to come out because I really like using a four mic setup. This is called the Glenn Johns technique for recording drums. And the way that it works is that you record with a single mic, usually an SM57 on the snare, you record with one mic on the kick, and then you record with two other mics, one overhead, which is usually directly over the snare, which you can see in the graphic here in Easy Drummer, and it's pointed at the snare head. And then this mic over here off to the side, it's off to the side by the floor time, is usually pointed back toward the kick or kind of in the direction of the kick pedal. And this mic and this mic are equidistant by using a tape measure from the snare. Now, in addition to those four mics, Easy Drummer has added a stereo pair for a room mic so you can see ambient. So here's the breakdown on the Easy Drummer kit. So we've got kick, snare, a kit left, which is that overhead mic, the kit right, which is the one that's over by the floor time, and then ambience, which is set back a ways. And if we mix that ambience in, we can use it in a really effective way to balance that out. So I'm going to play with that a little bit here. One thing I wanted to point out, in the traditional Glenn's Johns technique, you don't wide pan those overhead mics. I only considered the actual overhead to be an overhead, and the other one is over by the floor tom. So the one that is directly over the snare, which in here is on this channel here, typically that's not panned hard, and it could be panned to the left or to the right. I think the conventional way is you pan it to the right, and that will give you audience perspective, and then you pan the other one hard left. So you'd pan this about 50% to the right, and you'd pan the tom mic all the way to the left. I created presets today to do this under user presets so I can do it either way. A lot of times, for whatever reason, I like to mix from drummer's perspective, and I would put it on the left. So we put the overhead to the left, and then it sounds a little different. So I'm not panning that. I think if you pan that too much, it takes the snare a little bit off center to the left to my ear. But anyway, the point is, is you can get a really great sound, and this is extremely useful for all kinds of music. And I think it leads to also less phasey effect and a more natural effect for the drums. These are great drum kits. The producers for this are the same guys that did the custom and classic for Superior Drummer which is the main reason I was using Superior Drummer for drums. And so I'm really excited that the classic came out for Easy Drummer. I prefer to use Easy Drummer because I think it's a lot simpler. I like to do my effects and everything else in the DAW that I'm working in, in this particular case, Studio One. And so I want the drum instrument to be as simple as possible, make it simple for me to get those sounds out and into my project. So. The, the guys who were behind Custom and Vintage were Chris Witten, who was the drummer, and then Peter Henderson, who was the producer. And both these guys have deep roots into classic recordings, really in all styles, but particularly classic rock. We're going to go into how to actually lay these down as audio tracks in Studio One. Because once I get my drum part composed, when I go into mixing, I always want to convert these drums into basic audio tracks so that it's just as if I had recorded live drums. And then I, because that's just the way I like to work. You can keep everything in Easy Drummer for as long as you'd like, because you'll see here that you can easily do that. So with Studio One, I go into the mixer, and the, there's a preset here for route out. So if you click this, it just puts all the faders to zero. This is a standard preset and also puts all the panning to the middle. And then on the ambience stereo mic, it sets those left and right. So that's the starting point. 
The next thing we want to do is set the outputs to the individual to individual outputs. So I'm going to set this one to track two, to track three, to track four. So outputs one through four are my basic Glenn's John's mic setup. And then I'm going to do track five will be the output for my ambience stereo pair. So with that set up, if I look back here now, under instruments, I need to activate these for Easy Drummer in Studio One. So I click on instruments here, and I'm going to turn on these five outputs. So the next thing I want to do is to keep this organized, we're going to label these. So this is kick, overhead, and I label these overhead and toms instead of overhead left and right because that gives me a better understanding of what those mics are actually for. And then I'll just call this room. So those are, those are my, my outputs. So now I can do all of my mixing right here in Studio One. And at this point, you really don't need to do anything else. Now, if I want to create mono outputs from these, I use a trick, and we covered this in an earlier video about how to create mono outputs because these are stereo. If I mix down and do stems off of any of these, I'll wind up with stereo tracks. And I really like to see these as mono tracks. So what I will do in this particular case is I go into the song setup. I'm just going to create some dummy mono output tracks. And this is a, this is a trick. So I'm going to create four of those. I don't need them assigned anything. And just for clarity, I'm going to name these to match their function. This will just speed up rendering these to mono tracks. So I'll call this one kick. I'll call this one snare. And then we've got overhead. And while I'm at it, I will pick up one more stereo for room. I don't need to assign these to anything. I'm just going to temporarily assign these in order to basically break out these into audio pairs. So you'll see how this works. I'm just going to apply that. Now all these appeared right here in my project. So all I'm going to do is just assign, reassign the outputs to all of these. So assign that to kick, snare. This will be the overhead. This will be the tom and this is the room mic. So that's the setup for exporting or rendering my stems. Now all I need to do is go into Song, Export Stems, which is this dialog here, and go to the Channels tab, and now you'll see all of this stuff here. I'm going to select None, and then I want to select these outputs to mix down to. I've already selected a loop over the whole song, so I'll mix between loop. I'll keep the this format the same. Where it says mix down here, I'm going to take that out because that'll be part of the track name, and I'll just call that I'll just call that drum for now. And then down here we need to keep tracks mono, keep mono tracks mono, and then import into track. And if I click OK here, it will do this all in one pass. Now it's doing the kick and then the snare. And it does this way faster than real time, even though it does do them one by one. All right, so now I've got the mix down. I can now hide all of this stuff, or even I can disable Easy Drummer. And I can also, in the banks here, I can basically hide all of the, these are all the WAV files here, all of these other things I can now hide from the project and close the mixer. And you can see up here, let me just mute this. You can see here's my room mic. Let me get these in the right order. I've got my, my kick, the overhead, and the tom. So on the overhead, I'm going to pan this one slightly to the right. So we'll just open the inspector here and do that. This is the overhead. We'll pan that slightly to the right. The one that's by the tom, we're going to pan that fully to the left. And then the room mic will bring that down and then bring it back up to C.
So there you have it. I have now created audio tracks from the MIDI tracks that I had set up here previously in Easy Drummer. And it gives you a little bit of an idea of the sound of the new Easy X called the Classic. For the most part, I've been using in Easy Drummer here, I've been using the uh, Yamaha 9000 recording set. There's also other kits here that you'll probably enjoy working with. Um, I listened to these and I preferred the sound of this one. I think it's the, it, you know, it has the acoustic drum sound that's most familiar sounding to me. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review of the new Easy X and also how you would use it inside of Studio One. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in another video very soon.